guys, it's Jen and I'm back with another 6x6 six six paper pad love video. Today I'm going to be using the Craft Market 6x6 six six pad by Crate Paper again. And today I'm going to show you um, how you can use your 6x6 six six pads to back die cut files. So this is a file that I just cut on my silhouette. You can find tons and tons of files in the Silhouette online store or there are various like other people who sell cut files as well. And there are some manufacturers who sell uh, pre-cut papers like this that you can just buy at the store or you know in your online retailers and things like that. Um, so I'm going to be using these hearts today and these three photos of my daughter swinging. And I'm just going to, I've already picked out some papers that I want to use. And I'm going to go with the, some of the brighter colors this time. Uh, including this floral pattern which I really like and what I'm going to do is back most or all of these hearts with the different patterns. Um, if you're really smart you can on your silhouette you can um, cut these papers to fit the sizes on your silhouette but I just find that it's easier for me um, to just glue the glue them behind and cut, hand cut them out. So I will show you how I'm going to do one of these, one or two, and then I'll go ahead and skip forward so you don't have to watch that whole process. But what I'm going to do is I'm using my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive, which is a great paper glue. And I love this fine line applicator. It gives me just the finest line of glue. So I'm just using a little bit of that. And I'll go ahead and glue it on to the paper. And it adheres fairly quickly. And then what I can do is just hand trim it. And I'm just kind of sliding my scissors a little bit underneath the cut file so that I get it so it's just um, so I don't get any of the edges of the file of the See how this one I hand trimmed before I glued it down? You can see a little bit of the pink right here poking out. So I'm just going to trim that up. But as I'm cutting the rest of it, I kind of slide my scissors underneath and I cut at an angle so that I don't have that problem. And this is something that is a little bit more time consuming, but I really don't mind it. It's relaxing for me. And this is great for six by six paper pads because often six by six pads have a smaller print on them than your regular sized papers. And so when you're putting a paper into a smaller area, it's nice to have that smaller size of print to stick in there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up these hearts with some patterns and then I will be right back. So I reached a point, I've only added papers to two of my spots, but I decided that I wanted to figure out where how I was going to place my photos before I fill up the rest of the hearts. And I think I'm going to kind of tuck them in behind some of the hearts. And so these hearts I am not going to fill with pattern. I just kind of slid this behind it so that it can overlap and lay on top of those um, places. And so I'm going to go ahead now and fill up the rest of the hearts where I know that they will be showing. And I may end up leaving a few of these other hearts without pattern behind them, um, but I will I will start filling the larger ones first and then go from there. So I wanted to point out the fact that um, if you care about the way that the pattern is oriented, then to be sure to make sure that you um, put your papers in the correct way. But on patterns that don't really matter, like this text has the words going all different directions. I've just gone ahead and used the corner of the, the pattern paper to fill uh, the bottom corner uh, angle of my heart. And so that works really well to use up 
less paper. And so as you're going through, some of the pieces that you have left over might just fit perfectly behind here. And this is a, a particular pattern that doesn't matter exactly where I place the, uh, where the pattern sits in the heart. And so that is perfect for me to use as a scrap. But in other cases, like for example, the stripes, I kind of want them all going diagonally. So on this heart and this heart, I've taken a little bit more care to orient that in a way that looks good to me. And so uh, that's just something to keep in mind as you're backing the, the various areas of whatever pattern that you choose. So at this point I filled a lot of my hearts and now I've just placed my photos back on to kind of decide if I want to fill more of them or where I need to put uh, the rest of the patterns that I've chosen. And so I think I am going to leave some of the hearts just as this craft color, but I have one heart on the outside that's small that's filled and I have three that are not and so I'm going to fill one more. And I think it's going to be this one because it's next to the photo. And then I'm going to fill this heart because it's also next to the photo and it overlaps and I don't want to see that, uh, that piece right there. And so I'm going to fill these two hearts and I think I'm going to leave these four blank just as open kind of areas where you can peek through to the craft, which I am using a craft background this time, which is different because I usually use white. And so... Uh, but I think I'm going to stick with the craft this time. Okay, so I've finished backing the hearts. I decided to bring the text pattern up to the right here, and then I brought in this floral paper here for another pop of color. I thought it was important because the floral paper brings, in, brings all of the other patterns together because it has a variety of colors in the pattern and the rest of the patterns are um, they have colors that that are found in this this main uh, floral paper so when you're using a six by six paper pad all of the papers in that pad are meant to coordinate but if you're pulling papers from different six by six paper pads or even from your scraps uh, I think a good rule of thumb is to find one paper that kind of brings everything else together. And so that's why I've decided to add the floral paper a third time because it brings everything together. Another thing I wanted to point out is the fact that my photos do not match this color exactly. You could see my daughter has kind of a purpley pink shirt on and I am fine with that because the way that the colors play together um, there's blues and pinks and that blue and pink together make kind of a purpley color. Uh, so I find that it works because because the colors complement it even though they don't match it exactly. So it doesn't bother me to have my photos not match my papers exactly as long as they coordinate. And obviously you'll just do whatever feels best to your eye. But uh, that was something I thought I would share in case anybody that's helpful to anyone. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get this glued down and then I'll go ahead and put my photos in as well. So I'm going to use my quick dry adhesive again. You can see on the back where I've just, it's kind of mangled and I've cut all those pieces. Um, I'm gonna use my quick dry adhesive in the spots where it's thin, this thin, where I didn't fill it in. And I, I just realized maybe I should not do that because I'm going to be tucking my photos behind it. So what I'll do is I'm going to use just my runner adhesive on the backs of all of the places where I filled in those hearts and lightly place this down. And maybe what I'll end up doing is stitching some of it anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and stick that down. And then, so I have two photos that look fairly similar, and then this one's a little bit different. So I'm going to put the different one in the center, and then I'm going to slide this so that you that you don't see that other swing. So I'll slide it underneath that photo. And if I wanted to, if I had 
the photos the right size, I could simply just slide these behind the hearts as well to just give me, so the, the photo just pokes through the hearts just like I did with the papers, but uh, they're not and I am just fine with having them kind of overlap like this. I, I kind of like that look, so I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back. I do want you to still be able to tell that this is a heart, so I'm just kind of arranging it in a way that it's obvious still. Again, just hiding that swing. And I'm aware that there are going to be kind of some awkward corners poking out here and there. I don't think it matters, not to me, not this time anyway. Okay. So this is a pretty busy background, as is, so I'm going to find something that I can use for a titling option. and. I think a nice place to put the title would be here maybe or even nestled right here next to these two photos. So I'm going to try to look for something for my title and then I will be right back. Okay, so I've pulled out some thickers with several options for my title and I'm leaning toward these ones which are called Kitten and they kind of are a bright pink lined on white. Um, but I also have some more neutral options, which this might be a good one as well. I'm thinking I want to do the subtitle with either these Ellie Studio pink letters or these Teresa Collins Studio gold tile letter stickers, which kind of match that, that teal color. And so I'm going to audition both of these, actually. And I brought a few other options, just in case these ones don't work. And... My title is going to be Swing Life's Cares Away, and I want my main word to be swing. So I'm just going to I'm going to place it more in the center just so I can. I'm using wax paper so that I can place my letters down and move it around on my layout without having to commit because I'm indecisive. <laughs> so what I'm trying to decide is if this is going to be bold or heavy enough to hold its weight on top of the other papers. And I think if I were to layer it over a spot where the heart is behind it, that will work nicely but I'm going to have this space up here, so I'll have to think of something where I can put um, more of my title here or use a different word. I kind of like that, so that's one option. <laughs> I'm gonna see really quick what these ones look like, and this is called Roster, and it's kind of a light gray color. I really like this font as well. This one's a little bit more solid. It's it's really long too, um, which could be good or bad. It's not going to fit on my wax paper. So I don't think that this stands out enough. It kind of blends into the background. I think if I were to put it down here, that would be fine, but I think I'd rather put my title kind of nestled up in here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with this word swing, and I'm going to overlap it a little bit on the photo and then onto this heart so that I get the best uh, look where I'm not intersecting a bunch of different lines that way. And so I'm going to go ahead and just trying to decide 
exactly how I can place this so that it looks visually pleasing. I think I'm going to make the end kind of the go where the end dips in, kind of go where the heart dips in. So maybe what I'm going to do is we just swing life's cares away, or maybe that's too long. And I'm thinking because of all of the intersecting lines, I'm going to want to use a font that's a tile sticker. I don't know that these are the right ones though. Um, let's see. I might just have to put a label or something here, which could be cute. So I'm going to go ahead and look for a label and finish up my title and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so I remembered that I had the coordinating uh, sticker sheet for this collection from Crate Paper and so I, it's called Craft Market again, and so I used the tile letter stickers from that sheet for my title, Just Swing Your Cares Away. Now I realize I've kind of created this awkward little space next to, the, next to the word just, but I plan to rectify that with some sort of embellishment, little embellishment cluster here. So now I am ready to go ahead and get started with my embellishing, and I am going to keep it fairly simple because this is really, like I said, a busy kind of background already. And so uh, I'm going to look first to the sticker sheet that I have, and and it might be that I have kind of used up the ones that would really work. I could have used this as my label there. Oh well. Uh, I do like this sticker that says collecting happy moments, but I don't know that I want to add in another square element since these are my photos are square. I think I want the rest of it to be kind of more uh, natural and natural shapes so rounded or floral or something like that. So I'm going to look through some different things that I have and pull out some embellishments and I'll come back and do the finishing touches. Okay, so I've pulled out a few things that I think might work with this. I've got some sti um, dimensional stickers from Crate Paper and this is from their Notes and Things line and I thought that the butterflies were a nice kind of uh, natural element that I could add to the page and then this is from an older Simple Stories line called Vintage Bliss and it has a lot of the colors that I've used in the layout and then um, this is from Crate Paper as well this is from a Maggie Holmes line I can't remember what the line is called but um, it's got a few little word stickers that might work well so I'm just going to kind of take a look at these different elements. I think that one would go really nicely here somewhere. I can't decide if I want to bring the pink down there or kind of do a tonal look with the blue. Or maybe I'll do the bright pink. And that one feels a little bit busier. And I also have the kind of craft color. I think that I like the pink one. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that there. And I'm going to, they're stitched down the middle. I'm going to fluff them up just a little bit. And then I think I'll use one more. And Maybe I'll just use it to fill that space. I don't know if I want that color now. The yellow doesn't quite match. I've got this really mustardy, almost orange color in here, but not really too much yellow. So I don't know that I want to bring that in. I think this one's my best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and place that there. And I'm sorry if the coloring's off. I usually film my videos at night. This is in the morning and I have the sun streaming through the window, which I don't usually have. I'm, I'm in the basement and it's a hole <laughs> down here. And so usually there's not a lot of light, but there is a little bit today. So, so I'm just looking at some of these stickers and I don't know that I really need a whole lot more actually. 
I'm going to look at these word stickers and see if there's anything in here that I really want. Um, because I like having a few things that have kind of the word elements on them. So I think I'll just add a couple. Maybe one down there. One down here. And maybe one more. Uh, maybe one next to each photo. I don't like that color on, against the craft. It's too dark. If I use the word cute, maybe if I overlap them onto each photo so that each one is like actually on the photo, I might like that more. I feel like this one needs some sort of element to anchor it. Since these both have the butterflies and I'm not going to add another butterfly because I think that would just be too much. Yeah. So I think I'll just get some enamel dots out and add those around and maybe some splatters and I will be done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added my journaling, and I found some enamel dots that will work. These are flamingo dots from Close to My Heart, and this kind of center color, I am so sorry for the glare from the light coming through the window, um, is just the right shade for what I want to do. So I'm just going to dot a few of those around in, in some different places. And I think I'll do it with each kind of little cluster. And then a couple down here. Mm. Oops. Let's do a center color. I don't know if that looks like <laughs> butterfly poop, but I'm going to go with it. Um, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of Heidi Swap Color Shine in gold. There's gold stitching on these butterflies, and so there's just a little hint of it. It's important to shake these up really well before you use them. And I'm just going to do a few little droplets just along where those, again, those little clusters are. And kind of get a bigger drop by dipping it in and then just want a little bit of that shine. Putting a little bit more towards the top since that's a smaller cluster that doesn't have a butterfly. And that is going to complete my layout. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me again for the next 6x6 paper pad love video. Bye.